video is about my near-death experience where I went to heaven, saw an angel, some family, and came back. This near-death experience um, was something that till today is like it happened yesterday to me. I remember it like in detail. Since then, God's given me many dreams and visions to reveal to me what time I was going to be doing this, which is part of it is creating these videos for certain people that God, you know, Facebook friends, people on YouTube that are going to watch this. It's for certain people that God has already prepared to watch this. And I'm not saying like everybody on Facebook, but he's, it's, there's no accidents. If you're on my Facebook, this video is for you, or maybe for you to share it with somebody else who God thinks is for them, you know? Well, since 1992, I've had, like I said, a lot of dreams and visions that God's revealed to me how some of them are sporadic and deal with different topics and others pertain to the near-death experience that I had as a, like a spin-off from it. Uh, and I'll explain later as you'll see. God revealed to me that I'd be doing it would be in the end days, the end minutes, the end seconds. I knew it was going to be like the time is now type situation. It was going to be at the very, very end. And I've had many dreams revealing that aspect of this, what I'm telling you. I hope you take this as a warning. Not from me, but from God. Because speaks through us <clears throat> and he's wanting for you to watch this it's very important because like I said there's no more time the time is now it's it's crucial I've seen I've had some dreams and visions I've, I've seen Chinese and Russian troops in Texas in, in Corpus Christi, Texas. I've seen Chinese trees. I've seen them in California. I mean, they're all over the United States. It's not just in one state or something happens. It could be an EMP attack, uh, a fake meteorite that NASA cannot produce. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with HARP and all these machines that can alter the weather to make hurricanes and earthquakes. But look into it. If you have not looked into it. We're in a very crucial state right now. And people are totally unaware of what's going on. A lot of people don't realize that the United States and NATO are pushing Russia into a war. If you read the news or, or watch it on, on, on a computer, however you do it, <clears throat> on the other side of the world, it's clear the majority of the world knows NATO and the United States is pushing Putin into a war. And I'm not pro-Putin or pro-Russian. I'm, I'm for everybody to have peace. But when you see the news, MSNBC, CNN, uh, Fox, all these news, they don't report when we push. I mean, we're at the door, the doorstep of, I mean, we're in Ukraine, we're like all over the European Union, pushing Russia, cornering him into a corner. And when you corner somebody into a corner, you know what happens. It's dire. I hope you're taking this warning seriously because here like if you watch the news like I'm telling you it's, it's all you hear is we push and then the moment they counter 
you know, make a move to come at us or to defend themselves, that's when you hear CNN and, and the newscast people here say, oh, uh, Russia's acting aggressively. You know, and that's all you see in the news here. But if you look at other news, Al Jazeera, uh, uh, Router, RT, I mean, I mean, if you look at the news in the inside of the world, and you'll see the pace, who's moving first. You know, why didn't they report here that we move first against, you know, to me, the Russians and the Chinese are gonna be here. And it's gonna be sudden, it's gonna be quick. And everybody's gonna be taken by surprise. It's gonna be, uh, you know, that First Thessalonians uh, chapter five, I think it's verse three, something like that where it says peace and safety and then sudden destruction. That's exactly what I've seen in many visions. And not just me, God's told me he's revealed to other people that are having these dreams and visions that they've also seen Russian and Chinese troops on soil here. Uh, I mean, I've been seeing it for years in my dreams and visions, but uh, like I said, I wasn't going to be doing this. God was kind of like, don't, don't just tell anybody what, what I'm revealing to you to a certain time. It was like a, there's a timeline. And it was apparent that it was going to be at the end days. The end minutes. You may be thinking, this is crazy. What is this guy talking about? This can't be the end days. They've been saying that forever. And he's talking about the in minutes, in seconds, and the time is now. I mean, like it's, well, the time is now. And you're gonna see who's crazy in the not too very long future here. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've had a good life, successful, several businesses, the nice home, the nice cars. You know, I share it with my family and friends. I share it. I've never used it as I'm above you, uh, I'm better than you, I'm more intellectual than you. And a lot of people do that. And they're tied to the material things in the world. And for me to be doing this, I'm basically telling you I'm ready to let go of the material world. I've been ready at any moment since 1992. I can honestly say that I was ready to go. You know, I've been blessed with, you know, success, okay, but it's crucial for you to understand what crazy is right now, in case you're mocking or, you know, or scuffing uh, me or anybody for that matter. If, if you see somebody preaching on the side of the road, you know, Jesus is coming and you're laughing and trying to act in front of your friend, oh, of course he's not coming. They've been saying that for years. Weigh your words. Be weary. Weigh your words because God's watching. Everything you say, every action you make, every step you take, He's watching. It's all recorded. It's all recorded. There's no, like you're going to get away with it or nothing. I've been there. My near death things. I've been there. When you're getting there and you're just like, oh, there's going to be a record. And there's nobody there. All the people you're trying to be smart around and, you know, outdo other people. Like, oh, they must be dumb. They think it's the end of the world. <laughs> How dumb is that? They're crazy. <laughs> when you're in heaven, when you're up there, <laughs> when you're in heaven, and you're gonna you're gonna be there scared frantic 
you're gonna think back when you see this your reaction to this video or anybody who's preaching or stating the end times is now <clears throat> you're gonna see and think at that moment man man I was crazy I was crazy when I was alive back then mocking and scoffing people about the end days I was crazy to think it wasn't the end days because when you're up there you'll be able to see everything that's happening in the world as a whole not just seeing it from a one person perspective weigh your words weigh your words that's that that's from me as a brother in Christ to you don't people who believe on in the rapture people who believe Christ is coming people who believe in the the numerical sequences the 333 the 11 11 11 the 12 12 the people are experiencing that that's God that's been revealed to me many times that's God saying if you keep seeing matching numbers on license plates receipts uh, calendars uh, billboards wherever you're at if you're seeing consecutive numbers, 333s and 444s and 555s and 1212s and 1010s, if you're seeing that, that's God telling you that you're on the right path. Those are like markers as you're going. Those are markers if you see those numbers. And maybe a lot of y'all don't, but there may be only one person out there that's listening and watching this that maybe has and does and it's good that you're receiving this message because God's telling you through me telling you stay on path stay the course don't look back hold on tight to what you've got like the Church of Philadelphia hold on tight to what you've got because salvation and redemption is very very close and like I said I would not be doing this video if it was not the end days the end minutes I've had uh, dreams and visions of the rapture it was more like a vision I was like in a box I'll understand that later it hasn't been revealed to me yet and my sister in Christ was also in a box. We were close to each other and I, I came out like a missile, like just came out into the air. Then I realized that I was in the rapture. And I was kind of like, how do, how do I, it was like I was inside like a, some kind of like airplane or something. It had controls, and we're in the air, and I realized, hey, I know how to do this. I know how to do this. I was kind of concerned, like, wow. Then I realized I know how to do this, and I was moving around in the air in my rapture. But before, it was like, I don't know why God did this, but he sent me over the uh, Los Angeles Dodger Stadium to show me. I don't know why, but we were going over the Dodger Stadium. And there was a game happening and uh, people were running around in the state I, I could see I was like in the air I was watching looking down me and my sister in Christ and we saw people running around like crazy trying to get out of the stadium frantic like afraid of us like we were the bad guys or something you know in the end days the good guys are gonna look like the bad guys and the bad guys are gonna look like the good guys like the United Nations they're gonna look like the good guys people are gonna fall for it never mind all the killings they've done in Yemen and other countries around the world northern Africa Tunisia Libya Egypt Syria and now they want to hit Iran that's gonna be part of the end days 
That's going to happen very soon. Iran's going to be in the mix very soon because of Israel. Just wait and see. It's all been revealed to me. I hope you're taking this warning very seriously because the time is now. Get prepared. And for those of you that have been good and that understand Jesus is coming, that's, that's good. Redemption is near. Back to my near-death experience. I, like I said, uh, it was in 1992, I was staying with a family member. And I was, it was so traumatic. It's like it happened yesterday to me. That's, it was life altering. I changed my life. Since then, my life changed. Of course, I've done mistakes. Everybody's human. I've made my mistakes in, in the past, since then, till now. But in general, trust me, I, I tried to, I genuinely tried to do unto others as I would like for them to do unto me. And that's like very important. And you'll see when, when I reveal what happened to me in heaven. I was staying with a family member. It was a normal night. Normal, like any other night. And this is how I feel the rapture is going to be. It's just going to all of a sudden happen. It's going to be an ordinary day, and boom, people are gone. Well, it was a normal night. Went to bed. Fell asleep, and before you think, well, maybe this was a dream or a vision. Like I've stated, I've had many dreams and visions. I know even the differences between the dreams. You know, nonchalant dreams, regular dreams, and vivid dreams, visions that snap visions. I know the difference. Like I said, I fell asleep. And my death was smooth. It was smooth death. It was a very smooth death. I died. Like old people. You know, they go to sleep and they just don't wake up in the morning. That kind of death. You know, your heart stops. Well, I'm laying there. And you know how somebody turns on the light and you're asleep and you can see the light going through your through your eyelids and you just like oh somebody turned on the lights well that was a sensation that I felt when this was, was starting out I opened my eyes and I started noticing there was light in the room and that it was coming through uh, on my right, I had a window on my right and a window in front of me. And I noticed this light was coming through the window and given, uh, I'm on the second floor. This is happening, I'm on the second floor. So I'm seeing this light coming in from the window, like bright, very bright, strong light. And I just thought, there's a helicopter outside. And it's flying really low. And as I was like getting, you know, getting up like this, I got up on my elbows, you know, when you like, I got up on my elbows to see what's up, what's going on. And I was like, what the hell? And this light starts moving starts moving and it comes out in front of me and it's at the window like in front of me and on the other side there's you know you know of course the wall and there's like a tree and then there's like some wires and telephone poles and, 
And I just thought, man, this helicopter's gonna hit the telephone pole, the tree, the the wires. Like, oh my God, it's gonna, it's gonna. And as I was thinking that, the room got more white, more bright. And I felt myself like getting up. But my getting up was, you know, when you when you get up, your lower body's still on the bed. But this getting up was like, my whole body was getting up. Like I was levitating two or three feet and I was going up. As I was going up, starting to levitate, I was trying to look back and for some reason they wouldn't allow me to look back. I was just, that was a, I don't know why, but that happened. And as I was going up, I started to like stand up and I noticed like this energy, this energy, I don't know, I wish it's the same energy that I've, I've felt before in like in my rapture dreams. And uh, it was kind of like, uh, like when you see, you're in a sauna, in a spa where the, the waters are blue. And you feel like, a, or two magnets, like when you put two magnets, it creates like a, I felt kind of like a energy. And I just remember that it picked me up and I was like going toward the wall. And I and I, I was like, I knew the wall was there, but it just was so bright that I couldn't really see it, but I knew it was there. And I just went right through the wall into the outside. Like I'm telling you, I'm on the second floor and I'm like going through tree a tree and, and there's, there's a lot of stuff outside, telephone poles, and I'm going into this tunnel. I can see that there's this tunnel. And the next thing I know, it's like, I don't remember even like the jolt of, next thing I know, I just see the white turn into like this transparency. And it was like transparent. I went into this transparency uh, tunnel, like, but it was white first and it turned into, and I'm passing, all these stars and galaxies like really fast like you know the best way to explain it like uh, the movies the Star Trek movies warp speed you know you know what I'm talking about and I'm still not realizing that I'm dead I still haven't come to that conclusion yet and this whole warp speed thing, it seemed like it was very fast. I didn't feel like it was, could have taken seconds. It just seemed very fast. By the time I got to heaven, and as I was getting there, they started to slow down. I could see, like there was like a runway. Like the best way to describe like an airport runway and I'm getting there slowly and I come in and I'm I'm thinking what I'm dead I'm dead I was like how did I die like I couldn't believe it I was dead and I'm getting there And it was the most frantic, scary, I mean, I was scared. I was, can't even explain to you how frantic I was. I was thinking, oh man, I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell. Oh my God, I'm going to hell because I had been I had been bad. I had. I was married at the time. This is one of the reasons 
while I was staying with family. I was being unfaithful to my wife. And I just thought, oh my God, I've been bad. I've been bad to my, my wife at the time. And I was like, man, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna, how much forgiveness can I ask for? Because it wasn't gonna really matter. Because I knew like, there's gotta be a record of everything that I did. I knew everything over there's like telepathical. Like they're telling you stuff and you're like, you know, hearing things, talking, without even moving your mouth. And I'm frantic. I'm, I'm like, and as I'm getting there, I can hear some giggling, some laughing. And it's some family members. I knew they were family members. I just, I couldn't make out their faces and who they were, but I knew they were family members. And they were alongside, on each side, of this big angel, huge angel. About, I want to say, if I could see him completely like 10 foot, maybe. But I could only see half of him. He was like, from the waist up, like from right here up. I could see his head and it was like a light bulb, you know, when you see a light bulb, like it's just... And as I'm getting closer, he knows how I'm feeling and he's like, you know, like trying to calm me down, everything's okay, calm down. And I'm like, no, like, oh no, I'm going to hell. I was really scared, man. I was scared and as I get there he's he's telling me like not to be scared not, and I just thought like he knew what I was thinking what I was doing wrong in the world concerning my wife at the time and he was like no 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 like, you're doing good you're doing good so I knew like I couldn't be judged completely just by that, you know, what I was doing, uh, just with that one situation. And he made it clear to me, like, in general, my entire, since I was young, like, you're doing good. Like, you're where we want you to be. You're here. Like, you pass the test. So all my good actions outweighed that one action that made me feel like, man, there's no way. Like, I'm going to be in heaven. I'm going to hell. Because that's what we're brought up to think, you know. I'm not saying it's okay to be unfaithful. I'm not saying that, but but I felt that God was giving me the chance, and my family members were giggling because they knew already that I was going to go back. But I said I didn't know this at this at this moment. So he tells me later. He says, "Don't worry. This is not your time. You're going to go back." And I just like. I wanted to stay there. I knew, you know, like he had said, I had passed a test, and but he was like, no, you're going back. There's something you must do. And I thought, there's something I must do. Like, like it was something that I kind of felt like what is it I gotta do, you know? And they told me, don't worry, you'll know when the time comes. And I was like, I think you got the wrong guy. Like, are you, you know, are you serious? Like, you know, I kind of felt insecure, inadequate, that I wouldn't pull through on what it was that I was supposed to do. Cause I kind of knew like if I'm going back, what I'm supposed to do must be important for God. So, which it is, you listening to this is God is working through me for you.
you to get his message. It's his message. And I kind of was scared. You know, like I'm saying, I was like, what if I can't pull through? He's telling me not to worry, I'm going to go back. And I kind of was like, man, if I pass the test, like, I want to stay here. I didn't want to go back, but he was clear, like, what I was going to do is important. If they're asking me, you know, to go back, to go do this, and a part of it is what I'm doing right now, this video, and other videos I'm going to produce for certain people that are on Facebook and that are going to be on YouTube. I noticed this angel had a halo and the halo was thin it was like you know hair very you know like as thin as hair very very thin and as I was looking at it it went up like two three feet above him to the side and I noticed it like it opened up formed like a, a straight line it just, and there was a bunch of little stars they looked like grains of salt each one there was a bunch of them and there was he made it clear to me 144,000 little stars and as they spread apart one of them came out and he told me don't worry we sent one of our strongest star goes up like I'm telling you it goes and it turns into like another light bulb but smaller like it was my wife at the time it was like from waist up I could see her from waist up she she looked as beautiful as she was curly hair nice smile and she's like looking at me smiling and she's like waving waving at me like hey and I just thought, we, what? Like, we don't even go to church. Like, I don't understand. And um, <clears throat> I was kind of shocked, to be honest. And he was trying to explain to me. 144,000 would end up meeting somehow, some way in our journeys. And I may be meeting one of you 144,000 right now through this video. Anyway, she goes back into this little star form. And the halo comes back together the way it was and it came back on top of the angel and he starts explaining to me it's not if you went to church or not it's, it's all based on your actions your deeds how you interacted with others in the world how much love you have for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Love is like the main test, the main... Some people go as far as loving their kids only. You know how Jesus said, love, what good is it to love just the ones that love you? I mean, you love your enemy. That's, if you can do that, that's, you know, here on, in, in, on earth in the world, it just seems like that makes no sense, but it makes perfect sense when you're up there, like, because everybody over there gets along type thing. It's not, there's no ego, there's no individual. You can tell it's it's very different. Then you, we don't have our body form, you know, to go by, you know, the ego. I'm better looking than you. She's better looking than me. I got more money than you. Keeping up with the Jones. And if we weren't in physical 
bodies, none of that would even matter. How much money you made, what kind of house you had, what kind of cars you drove, it won't matter. All that's going to matter is how much love you had for your brothers and sisters in Christ. That's what's going to matter. Well, nonetheless, he was telling me, you're going to go back. And I was kind of, like I said, I didn't want to. I was kind of like, everything that was there was, like, I love art and graphic design. It was like endless amount of art and graphic design that I'd want to do. All the technology you can think of times a thousand. I mean, everything was there. It like made no sense to come back to me at the moment. And but not it's kind of selfish because I was my son was one year old and I realized that at the moment, like, oh my son. And he was telling me like there's something you must do. And I was like, what is it I'm supposed to do? And I'm real persistent. So I was like, what is it I must do? And he was again like, you'll know when the time comes. What is it that I must do? You'll know when the time comes. And he's revealed to me since then, uh, it's a gradual, what I was gonna do, you know, that's, it couldn't be revealed to me there. It was like something that I had to be like, I had to receive it like through code, the different dreams and visions that I've had since 1992 to get to this point where I'm at right now making this video I started to come back and you know they don't want to allow me to look back I started moving back I remember as I was moving back it was like the same thing but just as I was getting close to getting back into my body, it was like, like it just felt like real quick, you know, like one foot away from where I was, like feeling like I was levitating above my body, like one or two, three feet. It just felt like, and I was back in my body. And I just, when that happened, it was like somebody was holding my breath for like 10 minutes. You know, where you're just like, <gasps> like that kind of feeling, like, and I just thought like somebody was holding, but there was nobody on me. Nobody was holding my breath, or and I knew like by the way I felt, like I had been not breathing, and that my heart had probably stopped, but, you know, for that time being, and it was very traumatic, very life changing. I didn't sleep morning uh, I was eating breakfast with my family member and I told her I'm gonna be a priest and she was like laughing she just started laughing she was like started laughing and I was like no something happened last night and I told her no I'm gonna be a priest she just was like, are you joking? And I was like, no, I'm going to be a priest. Nonetheless, um, immediately after that, I started looking into, you know, theology classes, getting set up to go to school for that. Changed my, what I had, I had already been going to school for graphic design for like three years. Well, shortly after that, God revealed to me through some dreams that my path, my journey was not going to be being a priest and that it was going to be using my graphic design skills and my God-given talent for the arts and my career <clears throat> that I would be doing, that I'd be using my graphic design for for his will. And sure enough, I've worked for many companies, publishing companies, big companies, um, international books, writers, uh, different religions. I mean, I've done a lot of work for big companies, LA Times. And 
that was where my journey was going to go through. Publishing uh, and learning more about other religions since I did a lot of books and I would read them concerning other religions. I hope um, you find it in you to find Christ in you, not to be bringing people down that are trying to keep their faith in that Jesus is coming. That the two witnesses that I'm going to reveal in another video, they're here right now. I know who they are and I've known since 2005. I know who they are. I know who they are, with no doubt. The rapture's gonna happen. People aren't expecting that. They think, nah, it's not gonna happen. Some people don't even know what the rapture is. It's a taking away of God's church into the heavens, into the sky. We'll be watching down here like a satellite. And a lot of people don't believe the rapture. It's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen. And it's gonna happen very soon. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's gonna happen very soon. The term, nobody knows the day or the hour. And like I've like I mentioned, I've met a lot of people, reverends, pastors, priests, and even stating that, like kind of saying, don't worry about it for right now. Well, God doesn't want for you not to be worried about it. He wouldn't have given the prophecy as a warning to let you know about the season if he didn't want for you to be worried. Like I said, the, nobody knows the day or the hour. To me, why is it the Jews, you know, if you look at Numbers 29, the Feast of Trumpets, the Rahasha, Rah well, that feast is known as nobody knows the day or the hour, because that feast is basically evolves around the first new moon of the first of the beginning of September in other parts of the world in Israel um, they believe the Messiah is coming back on the Feast of Trumpets he's coming back to fulfill the last three feasts for them it's like a hint it's like God's saying my son's coming back on the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets is also known as the New Year's Day. Well, why is it that here in the West, when we use our intellect, it becomes a form to disregard what God is saying? If God is saying, my son's returning on the Feast of Trumpets. He's saying he's coming on a certain day, on a certain feast. You just don't know the year or the season. You have to figure out the season. But if you look into it and heed his warning, his prophecies, you'll see when the season is. So that to me is very interesting to me seeing it as a big picture and not seeing it from this perspective on the West, from the West perspective. The West is more focused on the uh, New Testament. Well, it's clear to me that God is saying, my son's gonna return and he's gonna rebuild and do what he's gotta do on the Feast of Trumpets, on New Year's Day, on the, the old calendar, not, not the new. So, I would be weary and be concerned when September comes around. I hope that you guys, my brothers and sisters in Christ, find it in yourselves to find the Christ within you.
ask for forgiveness, repent, because the time is near. Blessings to all of you, wherever you are, and I hope to see you on my next video. I'm going to be doing a series of videos, like I stated, pertaining to uh, dreams and visions that God has revealed to me since 1992 that pertain to the end days, like I said, the end minutes. And it's more about the rapture, the two prophets, people seeing consecutive numbers, 333. And um, I hope to see you. If you like the videos, like them, please. Uh, if you feel somebody else, your family or friends should be seeing these videos share them feel free to share them at however you want god bless and i wish you all the best till next time